So welcome to our joint service for uh, Baslow, Ema and Fulo for today, the 27th of December. This has been recorded, so uh, you're not watching it live, um, but you can still post comments on either Facebook or YouTube if you're able to and if you'd like to. Uh, so just in case you don't know me, my name is Robert Court and uh, Andrea, my wife, and I live in Fulo and we uh, belong to Eam Church. And it's a real privilege to be able to do a service for the whole benefice today. Uh, and we shall, in fact, be hearing from and visiting all three villages. So uh, stand by for all that. Uh, now, let's just begin with a prayer. Lord, thank you that uh, at Christmas, the Lord Jesus came to earth as a baby and his mother was a very ordinary person. The first people to be summoned by the angels to see the baby Jesus were ordinary shepherds. And so we come to you as ordinary people, praying that you will make us into extraordinary servants of yours. And so speak to us and show us how we can be extraordinary through this service today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the next... Uh, thing that's going to happen is that uh, you're going to get the words and music uh, and the uh, singing of the carol it came upon the midnight clear. Now it may be that uh, there are some young people in families watching and I'm going to suggest an activity which you can either do during this carol uh, which lasts for about three and a half minutes or you could uh, press pause on the on the playback uh, and time yourself for three and a half minutes to do this. And of course, this is open to anybody of any age who ever happens to want to do it. So no doubt there are quite a lot of Christmas cards in your house and some of them will be with pictures on which actually are about the first Christmas. So pictures like the stable, the star, the baby, uh, angels, shepherds, wise men, uh, anything like that. Not just words about it, but actual pictures about it. Uh, so that does not include uh, pictures of Father Christmas or snow scenes or robins, uh, which are also, of course, quite common on Christmas cards and nothing at all wrong with that. So in the three and a half minutes, assuming you have permission from the domestic authorities, because some of these cards might be a bit difficult to get hold of, I want you to collect up all the cards which have that have those pictures on, the ones that are actually of the first Christmas, and see what's there, maybe sort through them, uh, count them, and anything you want to say about them, like the number or what they're of, feel free to post those. You won't probably get my comments back, although you might, um, but it's still worth it. So that's in three and a half minutes, either the time it takes for the carol, uh, or just time it with perhaps the video paused, okay?
Well, I wonder how you got on with the Christmas cards if you did that exercise. I wonder how many there were and uh, how many compared with all the cards you got this year. Uh, anyway, feel free to post anything you like about that. Uh, now, the next uh, thing we're going to do is uh, the confession, which will involve uh, a response, which I'd like you to join in with, where it says all on the screen. And then we're going to hear our first reading from Irene, uh, which is from Isaiah. We're going to have the song, This is Our God, and then our second reading, which is coming from Brenda. Let's confess our sins to the Lord. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self-interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. Forgive and heal us. Good morning. Our reading today comes from Isaiah 61, verse 10 to 62, verse 3. The year of the Lord's favour. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendour in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God.
The reading is taken from St. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels went away from them, back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all that they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. Well, thank you very much to Irene and Brenda for those readings. Uh, now, I wonder if you've ever wondered what the sheep thought uh, about those angels and their shepherds going off to see Jesus in the manger, in the stable in Bethlehem. Well, we have a little bit of video here. You'll have to make up your mind as to whether it's really from the sheep of that time, um, but uh, might just give us a little bit of, uh, of an insight into what uh, the sheep thought about it and what they might have done. So enjoy this, uh, just a couple of minutes from some sheep. Um, and oh yes, in case you're worried, will you understand the sheep? Well, at great expense, we did get hold of an interpreter to translate from sheepish into English, which you'll see in the film. <coughs> you enjoyed the sheep video. Uh, I couldn't resist the irresistible pun at the beginning so apologies for that um, and uh, those who were sharp-eyed might have noticed that one of the sheep during the course of the video uh, managed to bear out that old adage never uh, perform with children and animals. Uh, just slightly reminiscent of the famous appearance of a baby elephant in the Blue Peter studio uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, or even if you do, you can find it uh, if you just put in Blue Peter Elephant uh, on YouTube and you'll see what happened. Well, here I am in Baslow. I've driven from Fudo to Baslow uh, for the first part of what's going to be uh, three reflections on what the shepherds did after they'd heard from the angels. 
uh, as in the reading from Luke's Gospel. It's Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. So I've driven from Fulo to Baslow, and not a lot of people know that the distance from Fulo to Baslow is near enough the same distance as Jerusalem to Bethlehem. So I've kind of uh, uh, carried out the journey of the wise men after they'd seen Herod and they went to Bethlehem. Um, I didn't make the journey by camel. The camel, of course, is uh, not available. It's actually uh, awaiting a spare part. So I did come by car uh, on what is rather a wet morning. Uh, now, the shepherds had a rather shorter walk from their hillside with their sheep uh, down into Bethlehem. But you can deduce from the distances that are involved that Bethlehem is much more like the little town of a little town of Bethlehem than Royal David City in the other carol uh, once in Royal David City. So uh, there they were, they came to the manger, and they came to the manger because they made a decision. When they heard from the angels, they said, let's go to Bethlehem and see what we've been told about. So off they went, with or without their sheep, not quite sure. They probably left most of their sheep behind for a start, um, despite what the uh, video said uh, that the sheep might have done. And uh, we need to apply this. So what might this mean for us? To go and see. Well, I think generally speaking, for us, go and see means uh, to explore the Bible. Uh, to examine what the church is like and what it's saying. And yes, we should be occasionally grilling the Christians that we know and asking them questions and getting good answers. And if the answers aren't good enough, then grill a little bit harder and get some better answers. We need to be doing all those things. We need to be doing them now at Christmas. So yes, do try uh, reading the Christmas story again in both Matthew's Gospel and Luke's Gospel. It's not really there in Mark or John, although John certainly has a take on uh, Jesus coming to earth uh, as uh, the incarnate Son of God. But just try reading the Christmas story again slowly, trying to look at it with fresh eyes, because obviously a lot of it will seem incredibly familiar, and let all the implications sink in. Because the implications of the Son of God being born in a stable in Bethlehem just about 2,000 years ago are, of course, enormous. So it's certainly worth doing that. And then, not just at Christmas, you know, the Bible is for life, not just for Christmas, like the the slogan about pets. So, uh, yes, let's uh, use our Bibles, even on a daily basis. And I really strongly recommend uh, getting into some kind of habit of daily Bible reading with appropriate assistance, um, reading it, uh, maybe with some notes, trying to understand it, get to know the whole Bible, and get to know God through reading it. And, of course, combining Bible reading with prayer. So go and see, yes, go and see what the Bible says, go and see what Christians are like, go and be with fellow Christians, not exclusively so, but let's, let's uh, spend time with our fellow Christians, have fellowship with them, and enjoy their company. And just one other thing to mention, uh, which is a possibility for anybody watching this, wherever you live, uh, and that is an Alpha course. It's the second uh, Alpha course we've done recently during lockdown or during times when it's difficult to meet together. Uh, it's going to be starting next month at some point. Uh, do sign up for it via the church office in Ean uh, and do consider going to it. It really has been very helpful uh, for millions of people probably uh, over the last few decades. And of course, because it's going to be online, if you live in Vancouver or Sydney or Baslow Eam or Fulo or wherever, you can take part just as easily as anybody else. Uh, so do think about the Alpha course. So that's all from me now. I'm going to hit the road again uh, and I'll speak to you again. So I've now got uh, to Eam and as you can see, I'm standing in Eam Church with the plague window behind me. Now, we're told about the shepherds that when they had seen Jesus uh, lying in the manger, they spread the word concerning what had been told them and about this child. So they spread the word. And, uh, of course, the uh, Eam plague 
is a very important part of the story of the village of Eam. Um, the sacrifice of people who lived in Eam in the 1660s when the plague came up from London and many of the villagers died and that was an extraordinary act of self-sacrifice. But it was of course an outworking of following the sacrificed Jesus Christ. Um, and that is an essential component of the story as it's told today about Eam. Um, but it's certainly a, a story which is spread far and wide, and people in Eam are very, uh, very clear that it's important to tell people about it. And the shepherds went out telling their story. Of course, they didn't know the full story of Jesus. They knew what they'd been told, they knew what they'd seen, but really they got about as far as page one of chapter one of the story of Jesus. Day one of his life, which was going to last on earth for 30 years, but actually for eternity, because he is the Son of God, the incarnate Son of God. But what they saw, the angels, what they saw of the baby and what they heard from the angels meant they just couldn't stop talking about it. Uh, I just wonder what uh, the sort of things that uh, you just can't stop talking about. Maybe you spotted that before Christmas, Aldi's were selling two metre long pigs in blankets for £4.99. Yes, that's two metres long pigs in blankets. That's really true. That might have been so exciting. You had to tell all your friends. I can remember 2019. 2019, doesn't it feel like a golden age compared with what we're living through now in 2020? But I was there at the Cricket World Cup final when England won possibly the most exciting cricket match that ever been um, in that World Cup final against New Zealand. Uh, I can still remember it. I can remember the moment when they won, when a New Zealand batsman was run out, and it just was extraordinary, and it made a great story. But we've got a story to tell, haven't we? The story about Jesus. And uh, so spreading the word, that's the second thing that the, the, the shepherds did. They went and saw, and then they spread the word. What about spreading the word for us now? Well, I think what's interesting in the here and now, with what's happening with the virus, etc., is that there is a greater openness uh, to talking about matters to do with the Spirit and God and Jesus Christ. People are thinking, if this is all there is, then it really is pretty poor. And so they are open to the idea that there must be more than this. Let me just uh, remind you of some of the phrases in the song, This is Our God, which we had between our two readings. And these are possible answers or helps for those who are in difficult situations. The first line, a refuge for the poor then a shelter from the storm. This is our God. He will wipe away your tears and return your wasted years. There are certainly people who feel that they've wasted years of their lives. Yes, they can come back through Jesus. He, he is a father to the orphan, a healer to the broken. He brings peace to our madness, comfort in our sadness. He's a fountain for the thirsty, a lover for the lonely. And certainly those feelings, uh, even indeed those realities about people's lives, uh, can be pretty raw, uh, especially right now as we're going through this difficult winter. Uh, and yes, there are answers in Jesus, and there are opportunities to talk about him. So maybe this might be time just to initiate a conversation we don't need to force it, we can just see where it goes, but it is Christmas time, and so it's easy to talk about what we're doing for Christmas, but maybe it's time to give somebody a phone call, or at least start the conversation by texting, or emailing, or sending a message, or maybe you're into Skype or FaceTime, but whatever it might be, there just might be somebody who you feel could benefit from a call, even if it's just to help them in perhaps what might be a lonely time, but maybe that conversation uh, will go on uh, through what Christmas is about 
uh, to your experience of the Lord Jesus. So, yes, spreading the word, that's the second thing. And that's the, that's the end of the second part of the reflection. One more to come. Well, uh, now I've got to Fulo for the third reflection. A uh, little bit of excitement in Eam. I got locked in in Eam Church, but it was all right, because it wasn't the angel Gabriel who released me. It was the angel Lynn Jackson who came and unlocked and let me out again. Uh, so anyway, now in Fulo for the third reflection. And uh, we're told that Mary, uh, having given birth to Jesus, treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Well, she certainly had a lot to think about. She'd given birth to and was going to be bringing up the Son of God, uh, the Lord Jesus. So uh, she had plenty to treasure and plenty to ponder. But the shepherds went back to their sheep, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So their reaction then was to glorify and praise God. And uh, is this also... Uh, our reaction uh, at Christmas and indeed at other times. Well, you may well be saying, honestly, Robert, is this really uh, a time to uh, give thanks and praise to God? Um, well, yes, I know it's difficult, but God's work and God himself is always worthy of praise. Here we are in a really difficult time, um, and somehow it, it is still true that God the Lord is in overall control of things. Um, it might not look like it, but he is. And as for us as men and women, well, I suppose that uh, the progress of this virus does highlight our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities, also gives us the opportunity to show what we can do. Uh, and so the vaccine we believe is coming, and some people have already had their first vaccination. Um, and that is a triumph for, for science, for man's abilities, uh, the abilities which have been given us by God to explore our universe uh, and make sense of it and come up with uh, advances like this vaccine. And yes, let's give God the glory for that give God the glory for giving man the ability to come up with uh, ingenious solutions. Paul, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, tells his readers, which includes us, to give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks, therefore, whatever happens. Give thanks in all circumstances, including even COVID. And so, yes, praising and thanking God is something which we're told to do. And it's good that we do it, because it draws us closer to God. And thankfulness has to be good for us mentally, as well as spiritually. Because if we concentrate on the things which we want to be expressing gratitude for, then that's the positive. It takes us away from concentrating on the things which we want to complain about and moan about. So yes, glorifying and praising God is good. It's more difficult when we can't meet with other Christians and join in hymn singing and so on. That's part of worship which we can't fully engage in. You may or may not have uh, sung along with the songs that we've, uh, we've got in this broadcast of this service, but you can do. And if you don't sing along, then still get kind of caught up in the worship. And worship is more than singing anyway. It's the way we live our lives. It's what we say. It's what we express to God in prayer. Uh, and it's good to praise him. It's good to acknowledge who he is. It's good to thank him for the good things that he has given us and the good things he's done for us and for all that he means to us. Now, we're coming to our next carol. It's in the bleak midwinter. So... The carol in the bleak midwin midwinter will be for our bleak midwinter, which this really is in, in many ways, isn't it? But do look at the words as they come up on the screen. Maybe not singing along kind of helps in a way to just look at the words a bit harder. And do look at that last verse, because that last verse suggests a response uh, from each of us. 
um, responses that the shepherds or the wise men might have had, but also the, the response that we might have. And so just consider whether you can really say that or sing that to God and mean the words. So that's the end of our three reflections uh, on Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, um, from our three village churches. Uh, so I shall be back home talking to you uh, shortly after we've had In the Bleak Midwinter. I wonder what you thought of the last verse, particularly of In the Bleak Midwinter. Uh, if I were a shepherd, I'd bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what I can, I give him. 
give my heart, which is a huge thing to offer to Jesus. And so if you mean that, do pray it again and carry it out with his help to give him your heart. Now we're coming to our prayers of intercession, going to be led uh, in those by Joan Plant. The shepherds were told by the angel not to be afraid, but to go and see. We pray that you would help us to always be obedient to your call. Blessed are you, Lord our God. How sweet are your words to the taste, sweeter than honey to the mouth. How precious are your commands for our life, more than the finest gold in our hands. How marvellous is your will for the world, unending is your love for the nations. Our voices shall sing of your promises, and our lips declare your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Amen. Help us, Lord, to be doers of your word. We pray that the gospel of hope, peace, love and joy in God will spread rapidly across the world. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your word made flesh. Make us a people of this light. Make us faithful to your word that we may bring your life to the waiting world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The truth was revealed to the shepherds, and they returned to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. O God, the Son, highest and holiest, who humbled yourself to share our birth and our death, bring us with the shepherds and the wise men to kneel before your holy cradle, that we may come to sing with your angels your glorious praises in heaven where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, God, world without end. Amen. Thank you, Joan. And now let's join in a final prayer together. Lord, we thank you for all that you have taught us today. We pray that you would uh, help us indeed to see what it means to go and see, uh, to spread the word, uh, and to praise and glorify you. And we ask for your peace to rest upon us. We thank you that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so we pray for your peace in our hearts and in our lives in the coming days and in the coming year. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I'd just like to wish everybody uh, a happy 2021. May it be a much better year than 2020 has been. We're going to conclude now, and this really will be the end of the service, with the song When Love Came Down. So uh, enjoy this, sing along if you want to, uh, and uh, have a great day. Bye.
shame will be 